So good morning, 181 pounds is my starting point and today we're going to focus a little bit more on some quads. We're going to go to Manchester first, do some photos of Laney, get some breakfast, get that day rolling, then head to the gym and we go about how I'm going to start rebuilding my squat from the ground up, from bitch to not so bitch. So you're probably looking at a thumbnail and thinking, holy shit, you've lost a lot of muscle and stuff in your legs. Not too bad actually, have been training legs pretty much, but that picture that you're looking at in the thumbnail is actually me, nearly 12 pounds lighter. So it's just showing out the detail that's underneath and that's what's kind of going lacking. I think because of the inability to do the squatting and things like that, those finer details that you get from such a great compound movement, they kind of do in the way and we need to get them back. But first, now I feel alive, ready to attack the world. What do you reckon? Do you like them? These are new design jeans, releasing these at the end of the month. They're gonna come in this, uh, distressed blue and also a washed grey. Oh, three new tees as well. Right, start the fluffy head, get to Manchester. So we've just had to drive all the way up to the Blinky Car Park. How high up we've had to go? Just to find space. But now we're going to head to one of our favourite cafes in Manchester. So if you're coming to Manchester, you're going to check this little place out. I'm going to show you how we order when we eat out, when we're watching what we eat. instead of full eggs, salmon on the top, that's a healthy fat, it's a bit of a protein boost, on a single piece of sourdough. So we're limiting the carbs in there, but still getting some in to keep us going. This is breakfast, I haven't eaten all morning, um, mainly because I knew I was coming here. So you can bank your macros, so if you know you're going somewhere nice, save your, your, save your carbs, fats and proteins so when you get there. Because the body doesn't need to eat every two hours, it's a varsity that is. If you want to do that, it's fine, it's do you no harm, but you don't need to do it, that's the main thing. So, bank your macros, enjoy something nice, but make healthy choices. <laughs> Egg whites, salmon, sourdough, and then this hot salsa dressing. <laughs> Flavors everything. So you want to have things that are like a small volume, high flavor impact whenever you're dieting or looking for food to be a bit more fulfilling. Plus, a nice little bit of an oat milk mocha doesn't go amiss. Got the little Lainey Bobster with me today, and she is mid prep. How far out we're we now? Three weeks? So, three weeks out from the show. I'm still eating out. Yep, I know where I can eat. So what are you picking? I've got egg white omelette with some smoked salmon, got mushrooms added in, and an Americano with hot skim milk on the side so you can make your own hot milk coffee. Focus on legs. <laughs> so there you go anyway, there's a little cup of hips and tips, hints, hints and tips is what we do when we're eating out. And Lainey, three weeks out from a show, still eating out, still having fun. There's no need to be locked up in your home. So now we're gonna go do some photos for the Bobster and then home. So the rebuild has begun. So from here, I'll send you guys back to the gym for a squat session that I film for you guys that takes you through exactly how you need to start rebuilding those quads, those legs, by starting with the basics. And that is the squat. No more bitching, no more moaning. Let's just get shit done. Yes? <laughs> I look like something from an 80s fitness commercial. <laughs> Come on guys, let's feel that sweat. Come on, I'm ready. Are you ready for the burn? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys and welcome to a breakdown of rebuilding your squat. If you're finding that you're getting lower back problems, knee problems, pains in areas that there shouldn't be other than the kind of the quads, the hams and the glutes, taking it back to the basics and making sure that everything is set in place so that your squat can progress legitimately rather than egotistically. I need to rebuild my squat due to the fact that I suffered some damage to my glute med and my left shoulder a while ago and it has been a progressive injury that's never really healed properly until now. And the reason it wouldn't heal properly is because I kept going back to doing movements that were slightly wrong and kept slightly aggravating the problem areas. So today I'm gonna to literally be going through the entire squat motions, the rules that you need to be applying, but then we're gonna actually go through my squat routine today for the first time I've squatted in around about three months and I'm gonna see what my max is. I'm gonna show you me at my absolute weakest really here today. So what I want you to take from this guys is to not be embarrassed by your weaknesses, whether it's the squat, the deadlift, the overhead press. If you ignore it and just go to your strengths all the time, you are never Never going to be the complete person that you want to be. It applies to all different things in life. We have to acknowledge our weaknesses, address them and make them our strengths and we do that by breaking them down and building them back up again. 
Are you squatting in the right place? Is the equipment that you're using up to par? What you'll see in most gyms is something like this. This is fine. This is a perfect rack for it. You also may see something like this. So this is known as a power rack. And again, this is a very good and versatile piece of equipment. Many, many more levels for which you to adjust to get that perfect height in which to lift off the bar. So if you're starting to lift really heavy weight, this type of thing is going to be better for you because you can get that perfect start position. Whereas with the simpler piece of equipment, it's a little bit more restricted in only having the usual four set points of lift off. What you'll notice about both of these pieces of equipment is what's on the floor. Nothing. It's hard. It's a solid surface. That is what you need under your feet. You need a solid flat surface. If you're stood on any type of flooring which has give or sponge or movement, that is absolutely incorrect and it's going to cause you problems in the long run. So make sure that you are squatting on a surface similar to what you'd expect to deadlift on. It needs to be firm, it needs to be solid, and it needs to be supportive. It might seem funny, but when you're going to do squats or legs or something like that, you need to think about what you're putting on yourself, the footwear. Now, flat soles is what you need. You see, so many people are squatting in running shoes. That's a spongy surface. So, even if you have a solid floor underneath you when you're squatting, if you're then putting running shoes underneath the soles of your feet, you're basically replacing that solid floor with a spongy floor. What you need is a thin-soled, supportive shoe, which is why things like the Converse Chucks, they're really popular because they're a flat sole and they're solid without that sponginess. The other option is something like I'm wearing now, which are these. These are the Lonsdale boxing boots. You can see, very thin soled, a little bit of support, but it's solid, it's rigid. There's not a lot of give with a lot of mid sole support here under the arches. The next stage up from that would be an actual squat shoe. A squat shoe has an elevated heel on it. The benefit of those are, if you struggle to allow your knees to move out in the right directions, you tend to maybe feel a lot of pain when you're squatting your knees. It could be that you're lacking dorsiflexion. This is our foot and this is our ankle joint. A lot of people have the inability to be able to flex forward in this direction. So they may be limited in their range of movement to maybe here. If you don't allow the knees to travel forwards, the hips will go back and you'll jam up and you'll end up stuck here without being able to go any lower. Transferring the weight from the quads, the glutes and the hammies onto the knees and the hips. It can also cause a collapsing of the ankles. What you'll see is as you come down, a lot of people will buckle in here and you'll see the knee twists in. They release on the negative and they drive up with knees buckling. It's very unstable and when there's a weight added to the bar, it's very dangerous. So if you ever see ankles rolling in when people are squatting, it can often mean that they're lacking in dorsiflexion. So my number one thing for you to invest in would 100% be the squat shoes. There are inexpensive and expensive versions of these, so go with whatever suits your budget. The knee sleeves, these are fantastic. They offer a lot of structural support around the sides of the knees and help, help you come back up the same way that you've gone down. What happens with a lot of people is they get to the base of the movement and that's where the movement collapses and then they get up by any means necessary. The ones that I use are the ones by Mark Bell and these are the strong knee sleeves and I cannot rate them highly enough. A little personal favourite of mine, man leggings underneath. These are compression wear that I'll wear underneath if it's cold or I can wear these if it's warm enough just on their own because putting compression leggings on helps keep the heat in the legs, helps keep the blood in there and it's going to enable you to stay warm and supple after you've warmed up and done the mobility, which is what we're going to cover now. So covering some simple mobility movements you can do here, we can go way deeper into this and if you want us to do that, we can do, let me know in the comments section. But for now, we're just gonna go through the standard ones that I will go through. Set yourself as you're gonna go for the squat. So we want our feet hip width apart. We're gonna roll our knees out. We're gonna engage the glutes. From there, we're just gonna bounce ourselves by holding onto something and we're gonna sit down into the squat. Get as deep as you can whilst balancing. So here, what we're concentrating on is weight displacement. It needs to be in the heels. It needs to be in the quads. Hold for a good, 10, 15 seconds before coming back up, driving through and squeezing the glutes. And I've only started doing this one myself recently, and this one is known as the pissing dog, apparently, according to Jay. <laughs> From here, what you're going to do is roll the legs single one at a time, but <laughs> you can see why it's called the pissing dog. Keep the body as level as possible. So again, avoid kind of turning over. <laughs> so we're gonna roll forwards for around about 15 seconds. You're then going to go the opposite way and really open it up, rolling backwards. Both legs, and then you're ready and set to start squatting. It's not about just shifting the bar. There's a whole process that you have to go through, making sure that the weight is displaced properly through the body. So we're going to cover the six major areas that you'll often see in a squat, or starting with the feet. Feet need to be hip width apart, not too wide 
and then not too narrow. Just over hip width apart with your toes turned out, the knees. The knees need to travel in the same direction that the toes are pointing. If my toes are rolled slightly outward, but I allow my knees to move straight forward, what we're gonna end up with is a collapsing squat. The knees need to follow the toes. We're gonna roll the knees out. Knees straight, rolled out. Knees straight, rolled out. My feet are not changing position. By rolling these knees out, what we're doing is encouraging them to move forward and down and out through a natural range of motion as we squat. And as we come back up, keeping the knees rolled out is gonna stop any knees buckling in. The booty. When you get to the top of each rep, what you want to do is squeeze the glutes. We do this to help reset that bracing of the core and also load those muscles at the top. It also stops us from dropping straight back down into the squat without control. Moving up into the core. So if you ever see a lot of people where their butts are kicking out and they end up with a really arched lower back, that's actually not a good squat. And this is a great one for stopping overarching of the lower back. By bracing our core, what we're doing is neutralizing the spine and keeping it safe. So what we want to do is make sure that we're breathing in nice and deep into our belly and then you're going to hold that and brace as if someone's going to punch you in the gut before you drop down into the squat. When you get to the base of the negative, you're going to release that air and drive up through the heels. Take that big breath in again at the top, brace the core before dropping into the next rep. This is vitally important to making sure that the upper body stays in a neutral position and you don't end up with excessive lower back curvature. Last but not least, we're going to take a look at the back. We need the back to be contracted and locked in place to stabilize that entire upper body plus stabilize the bar plus help us pull that bar into the body to give us something to drive our weight through. To achieve this what we need to be doing is pulling on the bar with the hands and contracting the lats and we need to maintain pulling on the bar throughout the entire range of motion. So the hand position needs to be suitable to your body width, your wingspan etc to be able to pull those elbows tight into the body and contract the back and that's going to really help lock in the entire body. So it's very important that we work all of these different scenarios that we've just talked about from the feet all the way up to the shoulders and back. So taking hold of the bar, when we come underneath, we're gonna roll underneath the bar and just push your body weight through just to stretch those shoulders out a little bit and help set that position. Once that eases off and you feel comfortable with your shoulders, edge your hands into a comfortable position to whatever your wingspan suits, where you're able to squeeze the elbows in towards the body and contract the back. Once you're comfortable with the hand position, that's when we can lift off. So with bent knees, brace core, we're gonna lift off. We're gonna take just one, two, and then three little steps backwards. Don't excessively walk backwards from the squat rack. We're gonna turn our toes out, roll the knees, engage the glutes, pull on the bar at this point now, and the final part is gonna be contracting the back and breathing at the same time to brace the core. So we breathe in, down, at the bottom, maintain pulling on the bar as we drive back up through the heels, keeping the knees rolled out, drive, 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 and then squeeze through with the glutes before going back down into the next rep. Right, so the hoodie's off and we've just switched up to the road max. Hopefully you can still hear us okay. But now we're gonna do as I did in the deadlift video. So if you haven't seen that already, I showed you where I stood with my deadlift. I've never really deadlifted and I showed you how I got to my maximum there. And we're gonna use the same approach with the squat now. I'm gonna go into my working sets and we're gonna progressively load the weight up as I move forward to see where my maximum lies. I'm gonna start out with a lightweight, do three sets of a lightweight of six to eight reps. And that's just to get the body stabilized, get it set into the motions and get me connecting with the mind to muscle and get warm. Once we start loading that weight up, that's when I'm going to start dropping the reps down. We're going to be doing only like two to three reps, then load up the weight. As it begins to get a really feel a lot more heavy to me, as it gets towards my maximum, it's going to be one or two reps at a time as we increment the weight up to see where I stand. Today I'm also going to avoid using anything like knee sleeves and belts up until they are necessary because the belt that I have, as with the deadlift day, is only this kind of neoprene soft squidgy belt. This doesn't really offer much in terms of stability for the body, but what it does is it just gives me a mind to muscle kind of connection for my core to be able to brace against something that is now wrapped around. I don't require a heavy lifting belt, a click, a latch belt or anything like that at this stage because at this point I'm still trying to build my technique. So the only time that you should need those heavy loaded, heavy lifting belts is when your technique is is already solid and that added extra weight above the ability of your body to maintain the technique is then required. Remember, lift it, don't shift it. We don't care about the weight, we care about the work.
Okay, so we've done the three warming sets and now there's 80 kilograms on the bar. But what I'm starting to feel is I'm starting to feel tension in the certain areas that are obviously weak due to the injury. So when I start to feel those come into play, this now is my start point of my weight where I need to really start thinking about the technique and driving through with less reps, but thinking about my mind to muscle and setting everything in place. And I'm gonna edge it up by five kilograms for maybe the next uh, two increments. And that's what we're gonna do. So we'll start moving that weight up, but the reps will come down. So eventually we'll only be doing like maybe one or two. To be honest with you guys, I think, to, I think today we're going to probably get to around about 100 kilos on the bar and I think that'll be the point where I start to feel the old injury and things like that beginning to overload. And if that's the case, that's my point. Could I lift more than that today? 100%. I could get under that bar and lift 120 kilos badly, but what's the point? What am I achieving? Nothing. What I want to be doing here is remember I want to be fixing what went wrong and progressing in true fashion. More weight on the bar does not mean more progression if you're lifting badly. So it's only gonna be three reps on this, then when I get a little bit higher, it's gonna be two reps, and then when I get towards that kind of top end weight, single reps at a time, that's what we increment up slowly. Let's get it done. I would just like to point out, you see the little, little girl over there with the cool hair? in the puffer. When she competes, she's a ninth in the world powerlifter. <laughs> that little thing. Ninth in the world powerlifter. She competes at 44 kilos or 88 pounds. Pretty sure she can outlift me. Pretty sure. <laughs> What's your maximum squat? Uh, 92 kilos. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> 92 and a half kilos today, Lex. Come on, 92 and a half. <laughs> and then racking it and going, where, where am I? <laughs> racking it and going, Lex, more than you. <laughs> <laughs> So that was 90 and it felt really clean, there was no kind of groin pain, nothing. So we'll get this up to 100 kilos now and we'll see how this feels. Single rep and then I might put the knee sleeves on. I mean, if I get over 100 today, I'm really, really, really happy with that. Without pain, with good technique and feeling like I'm owning the technique. This right now is irrelevant to me other than the number for a starting point. Rhythm, 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 motherfucker. Cool. Oh, holy shit. That shit felt pretty smooth. Right, let's get knee sleeves on. The secret to all life's gains. Minion socks. Look at Stamey. Minion socks, techie camo things and a jumper. Going on. Where's my life going, Jay? You need them inside out when you put them on. Label here, foot in a little hole, and you pull that up as high as it'll go. Now, simply grab, pull through, kick, okay. there you are. Easy, easy. Lemon squeezy. Lemon squeezy. <laughs> yeah, reject Avenger is like just waiting in the sidelines. <laughs> just like that Avenger that didn't make it. A pretender. <laughs> the pretender. I wanted to be an Avenger, they call me a pretender. <laughs> I can increment that up by five. No belt, but got the knee sleeves on. Gotta be confident from the start. Gotta be confident at the bottom. Because I don't want to be a knobhead and take up all the little plates. I'm putting a little plates back and I'm swap this two fives, which is 10 for a 15. Yeah. It's fucking easy before. Let's get this one. Yep. Pull. <laughs> How's that? Good. All right, felt all good. good. Alright. You? Two and a half. So, another single rep on this, then belt, and see where we get to. So, if say less today, I finish on 110 kilos, that's going to let me know that if I take around about 10% off that, that should be about my five rep range. But finding this maximum and letting us know what we lift and what we're capable of helps us when we step under that bar with a lighter weight because you've done a heavier weight prior. It's all about building confidence. Up, down, smash, up, down, smash, up, down, smash, let's go. Woo! 
we're getting wibbly. Felt that one, that started, the glue on that one started to come in. There's a little bit of destabilization on there. So, two and a half or more on the side, belt on, and we'll see. It's just there to kind of make you hold your stomach in more than anything. Yeah. It's literally just here now to give me something to directly brace my core against, which allows me to brace even harder than if I'm just kind of blowing out and holding as if someone's gonna punch me like I told you to do. And you get those real heavy lifter belts on, it'll really allow you to absolutely solidify that entire core and neutralize the spine, which is why they're so good at being able to make you lift heavier weights safely. But you obviously already have to have the technique down that's already putting you in a safe position for that belt to then work. So it's that matter of training up to requiring that kind of belt. Don't think you need one off the bat. In fact, use as little kind of stabilization and accessories as possible up until you really need them. Same goes for deadlifts, same goes for bench, same goes for everything. Try and do everything as clean and neutral as possible until you require that added little bit of help. Right. Keep it going? Yeah. Drive that left. Drive that left. Oh, that made my whole head go warm. <sighs> Here it is. I think that's the one. I saw the veins come out underneath my eyeballs. 130 kilos. Fucking hell. So that's 30 kilos above what I thought my body would be capable of today. Considering you're going to tap out 100. Yeah. That just goes to show. If you if you increment in like we did with the weights, if you warm properly, do all that stuff, you will be shocked at how much more there is in the body to do. Now, 130 kilos. That is 100% not going to be my weight that I work with but it lets me know where my kind of max point is. So I'm going to be talking about round about, so between 90 and 100 is going to be working at that kind of five rep range to start building strength, building that mind to muscle, building that technique, stabilizing the body. That's my, that's my marker. My advice to you will be to squat more than once a week as well. But that doesn't mean doing two huge squat sessions a week. What that means is doing one big squat session like where you go in maybe an only squat. That's kind of your day, that squat day, then you do accessories alongside it. The other squat session you would put in alongside a day where you're also doing legs again, high frequency training is better for you. It's the only way that we keep that protein synthesis moving throughout the whole body, keeping all the muscles growing and hitting them and keeping them stimulated towards growth. So twice a week doing your legs, one big squat session where you do maybe eight to 10 sets of that squat. The other one, you incorporate it with other work, leg press, extensions, um, you can even include hamstrings, press and I like to split them up, but whatever you want to do on your leg day, and you would maybe do three or four sets of a squat, starting in with a heavier weight than you would on the squat day where you increment back in, if that makes sense. Then, kind of three, four weeks later, we do this again, and we'll see if we get better. And that's pretty much it for today. I hope this has helped you out. I hope there's some points in here that are really gonna make you rethink some things and maybe help out, maybe get you through some of the areas where you didn't know why something was wrong and now hopefully this will help you fix it. If there's anything I've missed out that's glaringly obvious that I've forgotten, put it in the comment section below. If there's any questions that you have that I haven't answered, put them in the comment section below. If you like this 80s I'm an Avenger but didn't make it pretender outfit and you'd like me to wear this in the high street and go shopping, put a comment in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell. Hopefully we'll get this problem with the channel sorted out very soon. Thank you all for the support in the meantime. Until the next video, it's me, it's Jay. 130 kilos of yay yay. We are out.